Okay, it's 12.17 in the p.m. on August 1st. That's a commercial. Nobody needs to hear it. Well, Suicide Squad, who cares? Um, so I've decided I'm going to philosophize off and on. I'm going to hit pause and say what I think. Here's why I'm philosophizing. Matt Damon, for some unknown reason, is whining to some British newspaper. And he says, quote, movies as we know them aren't going to be a thing in our kids' lives. And that makes me sad. <laughs> well, first of all, it ain't my kids. You raised them. If you didn't raise them to watch movies right, it's your fault. <laughs> Secondly, I believe he's right, but not for the reason he's thinking. Movies we know them aren't going to be a thing. I agree. Or as we knew them, because they're already changed. But... Matt Damon's hypothesis assumes that the world is going to continue and there's going to be a future something like now and I disagree there but let's pretend Matt Damon's right okay I've already talked about the movies I've already talked about you've seen what happened now we see Black Widow Scarlet is suing Disney because they put the film on streaming the same time as they put it on um, in the theater. Here's my issue. It's stupid the way they've done it. It's very stupid the way they've done it. Here's what they should have done. Knowing people were locked down, knowing there's a pandemic, knowing different places have different rules and stuff, here's what they should have done. They should have put the film in the theater. Okay? Give them a normal run. Normal movies, not counting superhero movies, but normal movies, even the good ones, don't last in the theater for more than three weeks. So it's just simple. Say you have a movie and it starts on August 1st. That's opening day, right? You put it in the theater. I'm talking these big blockbusters. You put it in the theater. A month later, you allow it to come on your streaming platform. And you don't charge that freaking $19 or whatever. Okay? And if you want to have a tier system, like say you have Disney Plus, right? And you pay the whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. Say it's like $7.99. I don't know how much the hell that costs. Whatever it is, right? You could have Disney Plus Fancy Pants. And Disney Plus Fancy Pants would be a, a higher price, maybe $10.99 a month, but you would be able to get the movies on that first day that's a month later. So, for example, Black Widow, I'm making this up, a movie like Black Widow comes out in theaters August 1st, right? Then you have it on Disney Plus, Fancy Pants Streaming, the more expensive version, on, um, what do you call it, September 1st, right? Then, normal Disney Plus, it will come on September 15th, right? And then the movie stays on the platform for three months. And then it comes back off the cheap version, but it always stays on the Disney Fancy Pants. You see what I'm saying? So it comes out in theaters, it has that box office run, right? Box office run, which makes it eligible for Oscars. I think they screwed up the Oscars with the streaming and stuff. They should have never done it. That kind of broke the world. But anyways, so that should have been just for the pandemic. I don't know if that's permanent. Now, I think it may be a permanent change in terms of how, because it used to have to be, you had to have a theatrical run for so many things before December 31st. I don't know if it was a week or two weeks in New York and LA for it to qualify for the Oscars. That's how it was. Something like that. Then because last year and the way it was, I think they changed the rules because there were no theaters open. So, you know what I mean? They would have had like 10 movies to pick from, which they always pick from the same 10 movies anyway. But, point is, point is um yeah so that's how you do it where 
are the people who want to watch their, their kids just want to watch Frozen again anyway. So you just have them and whatever new Disney TV program comes on. That's the basic. That would be the basic Disney Plus that would be for the ch cheap normal price. Okay. And then you have that, like I said, the fancy pants price where you get brand new movies a month later, two weeks ahead of the regular people just to be better than other people. And you would get that, and then, oh, look, tennis is finishing on the Olympics, and I wasn't even paying attention. So, Zverev won the gold. I thought he was Russian, first of all. I think he's German. Okay. I, I was going to start paying attention. I was going to talk first, and then start paying attention. It's over. It's not live. Anyway, whatever. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how you would do it. You make everybody happy. That ridiculous price to see the movies in your house the same day that it comes in in the theater, I guess people were paying it, but it's stupid. It's stupid, stupid, stupid. And to me, that would stop people from going to the theater and just waiting eventually to see it way down the line when it does come on something but that to me is the way you do it because people don't have the money people are already paying for your streaming service they should be getting your movies so that's what i'm saying so you have that fancy pants you could have that fancy pants version like i said disney plus or something where the movies never leave or you could on demand them or whatever and then you have the basic one that the newer movie once it's gone in the theater once it had that two week window for the fancy pants people then it'd be on for like three months or so where you could watch it and then it leaves, and then it only stays on the Fancy Pants version, right? And then the other streaming stuff is older movies and the TV shows and all that shit. Pretty simple. Everybody would be happy. Nobody would be stressed spending too much money. The pe you would still get your box office results, but that's not what they did with Black Widow. They ruined everything with that. They screwed Scarlet over, and she's suing, and so everything's going to be a nightmare. But... So for that, movies have changed. I don't think, I don't know how many people are going to the theater right now. Um, I don't know how many people are going to go with the stuff coming. I mean, they, I keep seeing the uh, commercial, like TV ads now for Shang-Chi. And I'm just like, I don't, I'm not interested in that guy. He's not handsome. Um, I mean, Tony Leung is. But, so one day I would eventually watch it a million years from now just to see Tony Leung. Otherwise, I'm not interested in that. Um, what else is coming up? I mean, a lot of trailers, I've seen some trailers. They're the kind of movies that are more of the Oscar-type movies that I would have gone to see, to see for performances and stuff like that. I would have gone and sat in a the theater to do that. I am not going to sit in a the theater. A, I do not have money. I don't know if I'm going to be alive next month. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what's going on in this world. This world is still a nightmare mess. But pretending the world was the same, though most of the movies I'm seeing that look interesting that I've done the trailer reactions to, they are actor movies with actors acting in them. Um, that movie, what is it, Annette looks good. Um, that one with Matt Damon and Matt Ben Affleck, I would, I would, under normal circumstances, I would have seen it in the theater, but I'm already half laughing at it because it looks like. You know, people trying to be medieval and whatever. But, um, yeah, so there's, I mean, what I had really wanted to see in the Heights. It came and it went, and I didn't cry. But, you know, eventually, if I'm still alive, I'll see it somehow. I'm not, bent. they, they trained me to sit at home and not be able to do the things I want to do in life. So, this is what I'm saying. So, the world has forever changed. And that's what these people need to acknowledge now. The world has changed. And it's it, so movie schmovies. The reason I don't think the kids are going to have a theater experience, I don't think it's going to, it's just not going to be there. Um, everything is going to change. Movie stars aren't going to matter. I mean, movie stars made a lot of us sick to our stomachs with their politics. These people in Hollywood, the people in the media, they really think Twitter is something. Twitter is a bunch of bots. And if anything, it's the teenagers, the kids that Matt Damon is talking about who just want to take selfies and see themselves and see representations of themselves and want to see the things that they're being taught in school 
being put into practice in real life, even though real life is a totally different thing. So the majority of people, grown adults, don't have anything to do with the Twitter narrative. And the fact that all the decisions of this world are being made based on this Twitter narrative when, yeah, a lot of people have a Twitter account. A lot of people check Twitter for whatever reasons. But the people sitting around all day on Twitter getting into fights and doing all that shit, that is such a small portion of the population. And for everybody to be going by Twitter as if it's the it's the pulse on 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 you know of of society right now, it's not. Society isn't being allowed to happen because the policymakers and the people in charge are checking Twitter. And that's not real life. The, those, those people that two elections in a row. They, they estimated their shit wrong with the polls and shit because their polls were wrong, but also they were checking Twitter. And people, actual people, did things differently than Twitter told them they were going to. So we're in a bad situation because everything is chaos right now. It's helter-skelter. It's what Charles Manson was looking forward to. That's where we're headed. And um, so my predictions about the world, I mean... There's not going to be, I mean, I'm going to do actual predictions. Hang on. Our government in the United States, and I don't even know what they're doing in the rest of the world, but from what I can tell, they're not so hot either. Our government in the United States throughout the pandemic showed how much they don't know about the people that they supposedly serve, but they do not serve. For the pandemic, all they were concerned with were people who own businesses, small businesses, and who had school-aged children and who would need daycare. And I, I brought that up before. So their help and all the stuff they did, yeah, there was points where we got stimulus and stuff like that. But that stimulus was supposed to go to everybody. A lot of people didn't even get it. Then there's the people who were unemployed and stuff like that. So they had like three categories of people they acknowledge existed who needed help throughout the pandemic when they locked everything down. That should show anybody who knows better. The media is no different from them, and that's why it doesn't come through the media. There are so many people that they don't seem to know exist. They do not have any idea how regular people live and how bad things are going to be in about 10 seconds because today is the day that the moratorium stopped for evictions and stuff. Um, everything is going to be absolutely insane very soon. That's my prediction because what they didn't acknowledge, what they didn't account for, what they don't even know exists because they, they have their heads in the sand, our leaders don't know what the hell's going on. Very soon, economic situations are going to pop off. And you're already seeing rises in crime in terms of people um, robbing and doing things that hadn't, that, that hadn't been happening pre-pandemic. Um, you're going to see a hell of a lot more than that. You're going to have a situation where it really looks like a depression economy and they don't acknowledge it because they're looking at their stock prices. They know they gave help to all these specific groups. Like I said, people, like a person, a person who has one kid, that's a younger kid, compared to a person who has three kids, a person who has three kids got a hell of a lot more help from the government than the person who has one kid. But they both live in the same world. And I understand the idea that more kids cost more money, but they're probably not going to spend that money on those kids. They're probably going to spend it on a house. They're probably going to spend it on car payments. They're going to spend it on other stuff that fall by the wayside. I think a lot of Americans are acting like they're doing okay, and they're actually not. And a lot of people don't want to be embarrassed by how easily they fall off the cliff. So a lot of people are pretending that everything's all right. And again, they go by Twitter, so they see all the people, like I said, joking about oh, if they get another stimulus check, they're going to go buy a bunch of, you know, ribs or, or crab, you know, <laughs> crab meat or something. Um, and, you know, they don't understand, you know. Stimulus checks went to a lot of people who are criminals. Maybe they're drug dealers or something, so they already had money, and they used the stimulus for shit like fireworks and everything else because they don't make their money, they weren't shut down anyway because they do certain things that don't get shut down, you know, which are nefarious things. Decent people got shut down. People who should have been struggling all along got shut down. 
and like I said, things are going to come to a head now. Um, they put the they put the landlords in trouble by doing the moratoriums on the rent in the first place. Which, when I said, if they had given everybody two thousand a month UBI through the whole thing, the people could have paid their rent. Okay, people could have put that to their rent. The landlords wouldn't have gotten in trouble. None of this would have happened, and people would not now be in in um, what do you call it? In danger of eviction. If they instead of doing all these, let's throw all these billions of dollars towards this program and that program and the other program, that you have to be a specific kind of person and apply and go through all this red tape to see if you can get it. If they had just given everybody two thousand a month, everybody even the rich that way the rich don't complain that's why i say everybody because the people who think that welfare people they hate welfare people because they think they're getting taxed and all their their hard-earned money is going to poor people who don't want to pull their weight or whatever look if you give everybody the same two thousand dollars it's hard for them to complain they may still do it but that's why i always say give it to everybody give it to everybody nobody can bitch okay does it cause inflation yeah, maybe. But you know what? It would have stopped all this other stuff and all the crises that are going to happen very soon. If these crises don't happen, then I don't understand anything about the world at all. Number one, there's going to be, to me, there's got to be an economic crisis in the next month or so, real fast, that could create another situation. I don't know if people have the strength. I know people have the strength to go outside and march if it's Black Lives Matter, stuff like that. I don't know if people have the have the strength to um, march and protest government when it doesn't help them, when it screws up their lives, when it ruins everything for them. But we'll see. Now, now they're trying to mandate the vaccines. Okay. They know they left a lot of working class people, what you used to call lower class people, on the edge with the way they didn't help like I said they didn't give that stimulus like they should have so they have a lot of people on the bottom rung who are going to be in trouble right now or already are now they're doing the, the mandate of the vaccines things uh, you see some hospitals are doing that um, Disney and um, Walmart, I almost said Amazon, Disney and Walmart, I was, I'm sure Amazon will soon, since they, I it said Amazon, but, Disney and Walmart already have, these are the kind of people that have been hanging on, these are the kind of people that have been working through the pandemic, now they're being told, vaccine or get out, they know the situation they have people in, that's an extreme form of control, because it's like, yeah, we're controlling you, but we're not. You still have a choice. These people really don't have a choice. They can take this thing into their system that they may or may not want, or they cannot have money to pay their rent. Again, if they are people who have been paying their rent or were able to or were going to be able to, and they work at Walmart or they work at one of these places, these people already suffer. They were suffering five years ago if they work at Walmart because it's not nice. You're not making a lot of money. I mean, Disney, like I said, during the pandemic, they let go of people who worked at the parks when Disney got money shooting out of its ass. If there's one company that could have let that not happen and just kept paying their employees because it was a global crisis, they could have done that, but they chose not to because the bottom line. Um, if there's anybody who needs to be sued, it's Disney. So like her or not, anybody who isn't supporting Scarlett Johansson right now is an idiot because corporations are not on your side. But these people, if these people now have to decide between I don't want to get a vaccine or do I keep my job, again, you could have a situation where now a lot more people become unemployed because they're like, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm going to trust that God's going to help me survive somehow and I'm going to walk away from this. Meanwhile, if those places do it, all the other places might end up doing it, which will allow nobody to find a job without getting a vaccine. Are there enough people who want to do that? Because they were pretend complaining already that they couldn't find people to fill the jobs. Now they're trying to force people to get the vaccine um, after all their incentives and stuff didn't work. 
And we're coming to, to me, we're coming to a crisis point. I mean, we've been in crisis, but we're coming to a crisis point where all these things are meeting up that get with people being forced, people being spread thin, people being like, okay, time's up on your um, rent being, you know, not waived, but delayed. Now you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to get the vaccine, you got to pay these bills, so you need the job, you can't quit. But can you? But what do you do? It's your body, your choice. You have all this shit coming together, all at the same time. Meanwhile, we're all seeing news reports constantly about people who are still getting what they're calling breakthrough um, COVID cases. Meanwhile, that's what they said all along. I don't. You, it was always going to be able to be spread by people who who had the vaccine. They always said that. So why it's now news? I don't understand. It's just, it, it baffles me when it's like, you're repeating the news as if it's new news when that's what you said in the first place. And I'm like, am I, that's why I sit here and I'm like, am I the only person paying attention? I don't understand my, why my life is that bad when I'm obviously so much smarter than everybody else. <laughs> but sometimes I feel like I'm the only person paying attention or I'm the only one who has listening comprehension or something like that. But here we are. So... Then, then, on top of all these things, I feel like because things are so bad, because the powers that be, the evildoers, the elite, the 1%, are now just have such a lack of compassion or empathy or anything for the 99%, besides it popping off between people and their situations of people finally really deciding to revolt for a real reason instead of, you know social justice reasons for like the reason of hey I'm not going to be able to eat anymore I'm not going to be able to have shelter because of the decisions you're making that have nothing to do with me you know what I mean if I want to work and I want to do this job and it's a shitty job but I'll take the money to pay my rent but now I can't pay my rent because I don't want to put that thing into my body you're now forcing me into a situation that is, is unmanageable, a situation that cannot stand. Perhaps that will happen, perhaps it won't. We'll see. We'll see how bad, how much people care about their sovereignty over their own body compared to it, to put people in this position. This position they put so many of us in already that, like I said, the people, they don't count. But to put people in the position where you have to choose between having a roof over your head, having money to pay your bills, and taking in a, a, a vaccine into your system that you do not want. Because there are people, if people wanted it, they would have got it already. Anybody who hasn't gotten it yet doesn't want it. So if you're now mandating it or you're trying to circumvent mandating it by saying, well, if you work here, you have to get it. If you work here, you have to get it. If you're a federal worker, you have to get it. You're forcing people. You're forcing people to get this vaccine and you're making them decide between themselves and themselves you're making them decide between their body and their ability to have a roof over their head if that doesn't pop off then they really have turned people they really have subjugated people to a point where they now just have no mojo left to stand up for themselves which could be but also we've seen throughout this pandemic we see you turn on the news yes there's olympics and everything else we've seen how much climate stuff is going on natural disasters the flooding the the wildfires that happen every year that makes people homeless that makes people desperate the sadness the pain everything everyone's going through the lies through the tv you see simone biles should have everything should be over there winning gold medals the girl can't her brain went kablooey on her and she can't she's got the twisties or whatever is happening and she is not fulfilling a destiny that most people thought was a cakewalk. And it's because of mental health issues. Naomi Osaka has mental health issues. Everybody who went through this lockdown has mental health issues. The degree to which it affected you financially, the degree to which you were isolated from other human beings, the degree to which, you know, you were little kids, no, am I going to school, am I not going to school? Are we wearing masks, are we not wearing masks? You know, is my grandma dead? I mean. 
the degree to which people were put under complete mental strain has made everybody crazy. Everybody's crazy. And these deadlines are... Everything is coming to a head. People are mentally not well. Most people are mentally not well because of what has happened to all of us. And then, like I said, you have these the situation is happening. I don't believe that this is just going to happen and then some people will survive and some people won't. A bunch of people will commit suicide because they got nothing left to live for. A bunch of people will die of COVID or whatever, the Delta variant or whatever. I think a lot of people are going to die. <laughs> I just jumped to my final, uh, not final, but my most important prediction. I think a lot of people are going to die in the next year, year and a half. A lot of people, way more people than died from COVID. And I don't think it's going to be from the COVID. I think there's going to be a cataclysm. I think there's going to be a cataclysm, multiple cataclysms. Something big is going to happen because everything is leading up to that. As if you watched a movie, if you saw a story, this is going wrong. That's going wrong. Here's some stuff over here. Here's some forest fires over here. Here's a volcano. Here, you know what I mean? The world can't be at this pressure cooker. The collective vibes on earth can't be everybody has anxiety. Everybody is worried about where the money's going to come from. I mean, by everybody, I mean everybody but the elite. The elite who are making it this way. Everybody is on edge. Okay? Everything is squirrely. You know, as much as I've been enjoying the Olympics, people have been doing great. They're seeing the people. There's even the people celebrating at home, jumping up and down. Their person won. There's still a sadness that they're not all together. Everything is tinged with this dark sadness. So there's sadness and there's anxiety and there's climate shit and there's economic fallout. All this stuff is coming to this, like I'm saying, the next couple months. Before we get to 2022, I foresee, I foresee with my superpowers, something major that is as to yet unforeseen. Something that is going to be a cataclysm. Okay. Something like a major... I don't want to say a pole shift, because that's maybe too big. But something like one of those big volcanoes. What was that salt flat place? Um, something that has always had the potential to happen, but hasn't. Or something that we've never even thought of. Alien invasion would be my favorite. That's the one I would choose, and I would love for that to happen any minute now. But... I, I feel the way things are headed, the way everything's a nightmare, the way everything is so tumultuous in a way it wasn't two years ago, that was brought about by the powers that be, the people in charge, the elite, and whoever are the ones who rule over them, their overlords. They have taken things into such a chaotic, insane direction that something somewhere has to pop. And it might be Gaia. It might be Earth. And, um, something, I, I believe before the end of this year, there's gonna not, not just forest fires over here, not just some hurricanes, something that will affect either one very large landmass, like the entire United States of America, or something in the ocean or like I said some kind of world thing where the sun just goes out and then we all freeze to death something okay that was maybe too much but something that will because the pandemic didn't do what it should have done spiritually cosmically it didn't do it did the exact opposite of what it should have done for humankind in terms of making us better people like I said doing away with the monetary system or, or fixing it or something where people care more about each other 
in fact, it only made the, the, the wealthy wealthier and made everything worse. So because that, because the powers that be, because every, the lessons were not learned from the, the 2020, I think that there's going to be something to really, really fix it. <laughs> There's going to be some major cataclysm that's going to shut everybody down and say, okay, you got the warning. You didn't do that was the warning. The lockdowns and the pandemic and all that shit, that was the warning. You didn't get better. You became worse. You became more money-centered. You became more vainglorious. You became more... You The, the rich became richer and the poor suffered and you didn't care. Um, the powers that be try to do more control on people. I believe that something is going to come to balance it out and to me the easiest thing is some kind of cataclysm you know could be the actual rapture that would be great but i'm thinking cataclysm of the not necessarily ice age kind but enough to wipe out a significant portion of the earth not another germ, not a pandemic, a cataclysm. And then there will be no movies for Matt Damon to get saved from space in. So he's right about that. There's not going to be movies the way we've watched them. That's not going to happen either way. So that's just, a, that's just a, to me, that's like the JV version of how life's going to change. Because it's already changed. Um, is there hope? There's always hope. But to me... Humankind can't get better. It can only get worse if things continue down the path it's on. People only get a bit worse. It's going to be because we're already, we're already backsliding with the race stuff. We're already backsliding with the gender stuff. Further separating people when there was a good couple decades there where we were all getting along pretty good. So was, the backsliding's been happening to a less evolved version of humans than we were, let's say, in 1999. Um, so yeah, my prediction is before the end of the year, something big, something big is going to happen. Whether it's a worldwide revolt against the powerful, that could happen. I don't see people having that in them. And I see a lot of people just being washed away with the tide in, in terms of economics and, you know, the society care about them. You know what I mean? If you didn't, if you didn't come out, if you haven't already come out of the pandemic smelling like a rose, then... If things stay the way they are, society won't care if you fall off the earth. And that that's sad for me because I'm one of the people. But it's sad for everybody because it shouldn't be that way. Um, but that's if nothing changes. If nothing major happens, I think something major will happen. Because, like I said, all this other shit that shouldn't be happening keeps happening. All these other environmental things happen. Simone Biles could not got the twisties. You know what I mean? There's too many things that are unexpected that pop up and people just have not learned to expect the unexpected and people did not learn to the, the right lessons from the pandemic. If anything, people learned to like the people that were already their family. That You should have been doing that before. Um, so, to me, cataclysm's coming before the end of 2021. S or something big. Something big. Like a worldwide revolt. Something big is coming. And then next year, 2022, if that didn't happen, if the economy still held on and a lot of us just went away and we pretended we didn't exist in the first place, the economic crash will come for everybody else. There's no way the economy can keep going. Okay. Um, because the people who have, who were not the ultra rich, but who made it this far, they will, they, the ultra-rich will make them pay for whatever has happened in the past. The amount of money that was used by Congress to fund these bills that Biden has put through that don't help individuals that much, <laughs> but help whatever projects they want to do, infrastructure or any of these other things that they put money aside for. Somebody's going to have to pay for that. And when 2022 comes around, that'll be ever who hung on by a thread and who still has money and a job and savings 
the next thing you know, they'll be paying, you know, $20 for gas. And they'll be paying $10 for a gallon of milk. And that's how that will come home to roost for the people on the bottom. Because, you know, the ultra-rich don't even know how much milk costs because somebody else buys it for them. You know, like Lucille said, it's a banana. What can it cost? $10? That's who these people are. So, yeah, that's my prediction. I could be predicting that because my life's in the toilet. But I don't think so. I just feel like I've been somewhat right about a lot of things that happen. I, you know, not because I'm a genius, not because I'm clairvoyant, but because to me, this seems like an obvious outcome of the kind of greed and stupidity we've seen from government and the, the, their need to control when they don't know what the hell they're doing. And they've sent us all down the path to ruin and we're on that path and ruin is a coming and it's right over there <laughs> and it's coming soon. And I do think that there will be because of the horrible vibrations in the earth, all the everybody being nervous and scared and everything going on and all the crap that we have to deal with and like I said you can already see it in the earth with all these I believe there will be a cataclysm maybe I should do a second one a second video after this to say what kind of cataclysms I mean but I'm not sciencey I watch things here and there there's that movie about the salt flats I can't remember but they're all over the earth there are dormant volcanoes that at any point could pop off right a huge chunk of ice could come flying down and ruin everything okay the poles could shift if the poles shift that's game over for everybody that's not exactly what i was thinking of happening but if it did but something big is coming could be jesus i don't know if he wants to bother with us anymore i wouldn't but Something has got to come. <laughs> now I'm Travis Bickle. A real rain's going to come. Real rain could come. A real rain could come. But, uh, yeah. I am going to try to fix the audio on this. It's very long. It'll take forever. I want to put a couple things in there. But, yeah. So, my predictions are... The world has changed. People will not watch movies like they did in the past. But it has nothing to do with that anymore because we're so to me we have traveled so far in in one year a year ago we have traveled so far from where we were as as a species and the people in the team refuse to acknowledge it they they're trying to go back to who we were as a species and it's not going to happen the mandates forcing people to get vaccinated not helping people enough economically and not even understanding what they needed to do that they didn't do it's all going to blow up very soon. If we, tur if we turn into total violence and people robbing everybody and home invasions and who knows what. Who knows what's going to happen. But it was man-made. It was government-made. And it's a shame because the, the pandemic lockdowns really in the beginning, it looked like we had an opportunity to really hold hands and sing Kumbaya and get it right and we didn't. And yeah, so that's what I think.